PowerPoint has various tools to help you create nice presentations. But the same presentation tools can create a disaster. In our previous tutorial, I took you from an ugly slide deck to a respectable looking presentation. But while you would be okay giving it in a corporate boardroom, you can do better. And I can help. Hi, this is Les from Power Up Training, where I bring my decades of experience to you for free. In this shorter tutorial, we're going to take that earlier respectful presentation and turn it into great. Our goal will be to make the presentation visually distinctive, but still professional looking. You will learn how to transform the slide quickly and with ease. To make this happen, we're going to be using Microsoft's PowerPoint's design idea tool. You'll need to be running a modern version of PowerPoint such as Office 2013 or later. And as always, if you have Office 365, it will always have the latest and greatest tools. I'm going to be working on a Windows PC, but these tricks will work just as well on an Apple iOS Mac computer and best used on desktop computers or laptops. Going to the slide sorter presentation view, we're going to see how that presentation looked after we turned it to a great presentation but we're going to do even better. The key takeaway from that previous tutorial was to not use the floating text boxes or random objects. Always work within the Microsoft guardrails using the design template. More on that in a moment. But let's get me out of the way so we can focus on the presentation. Okay, speed slide deck upgrade, starting on slide one. Going through the design menu and invoking design ideas, we now get to pick and choose what looks good and fits our overall theme. Our first choice radically transforms the background into a tasteful muted photo and automatically creates animations for our titles. Slide two lets us go from converting basic bullet points to matching icons. The designs idea tool found keywords to select and match the topic. Cool. The next two slides are before and after office design plans. We want them to be similar in look, but still have a distinctive look when we go from the current to the proposed plans. The budget slide starts off just okay, but a bit stark. Let's try on a few styles to find one that fits our overall presentation color design theme, but still makes the numbers more readable. The issue slide as a basic smart art object and a quick preview of our design choices, it becomes obvious that we now have a trend and a look that we want to apply. For the goals, we should lighten it up just a bit, but I'm struggling as the slide still has too many words. Trying on a few design ideas, I do find one that is brighter in look, but also makes it easier to see the topics and supporting facts. The project team org chart it's the info cross, but it is dull, dull, dull. There, we go with a quick fix using just a couple clicks. And the project schedule is also dull. And it's not obvious that this is a timeline. After trying on several choices, this selection is now clearly a project timeline under just three clicks. And for our concluding slide, Design Ideas offers up a word appropriate building background photo but we're not building a skyscraper, so that doesn't work. But this choice of icons, colors, and design layout drives home the point that one, we have issues, two, we have a proposed plan, and three, we're asking for the executive approval. And to wrap it up, we choose a non-animated title slide that is similar to our first slide. There, the whole presentation Remodeled in around 200 seconds for 11 slides. We just went from good to unbelievably great. Now, let's get into the details to master this amazing technique. I'm working, as I said before, on the latest version of PowerPoint Office 365 on a Windows computer, but this will work just fine on a Mac desktop or laptop. Do see our other video about why design ideas might not be available to you. It is so complicated. First off, 
The minimum version level is Office 2016, and even then, there are some limitations. While the web and tablets do have some features, owning the latest version of Office or Office 365 for your desktop and laptop will always provide the most robust set of features. So here's the main issue. The traditional PowerPoint design themes will give you a set of professional design slide deck looks for color, fonts, layout, and backgrounds. But they do get boring over time and you need a dynamic, fresh look that your audience has not seen before. You could choose a design theme, and my recommendation is to select a more nondescript theme like this one that has a strong, thick set of lines, but simple background, and then experiment with color variants to add a new look beyond the default. But I find that's not really enough. It can help, but we want to try something different. We need a fresh look that jumps off the screen. And the answer is design themes. Here, I've selected the crop design theme and swapped into a darker color variant. But now the magic begins if I go to the designs ribbon menu and find design ideas on the far right. So what is design ideas? It is Microsoft's attempt at automated intelligence for graphic design. It will attempt to offer up various design suggestions for a specific slide that you browse and find one that seems to fit from your perspective. Find one that looks interesting, you select, and it transforms the look of the target slide one at a time for backgrounds, colors, fonts, and layouts. And for title layout slides, it will sometimes offer up, in addition, an animated title slide as indicated by a star icon on the bottom left corner of the preview. In this example, it took the photo, resized it, placed it as the background, which also then changed the title font and size and subtitle. It relocated them to the center with a transparent background rectangle inside of a black at boxes and then animated the word titles to appear one at a time. All those changes with one click of a mouse. While there are a bunch of different choices that you can find to match your personal taste. I do need to warn you that if you leave or apply one design and then come back, you may not find the original set of choices. You have no control or recalling design ideas as Microsoft keeps offering up fresh new ideas for better or for worse. In those cases, you can try to undo the change and go back to the original base look and hope that the design look that you liked earlier come back for you to choose. Okay, I'm gonna choose the one design that we previewed a few moments ago, as it is a fantastic opening for our slide deck. Going to slide number two, we have a pretty simplistic looking text bullet list. And since we were already in the design ideas, as soon as we select the slide, it starts to offer up new design ideas. Once again, we can click and try on different designs to see how they look. And it's of interest to see that Design Ideas understands our color theme choices. Watch as a choice changes to our purple variant and how the offerings are changed for us to select from. I'm going to go ahead and undo that color theme side trip so we can go back to match the rest of the presentation. Okay, this is an acceptable choice of colors and graphic background boxes, making the text bullet points stand out. But we have even more choices, like the use of PowerPoint SmartArt, which now puts each bullet line in its own graphic box. SmartArt is a power automated tool, and we discuss it in more depth in the above reference tutorial. But Design Ideas does make it easy with just a single click and be done. But why these colors? Well, look at the color choices for the slide title word. See the theme colors? Both the major row and then the subtle shades below. So the Design Ideas generated slides artistically 
choosing from this palette of colors. Once again, with just a single click of our mouse and no expertise needed by us. But SmartArk has even more magic up its sleeve. See the choice of icons to supplement our bullet points? Looking closer, we find the magic. See how PowerPoint investigated each bullet point to find the main text topic. Then it associated a matching icon. You may or may not like the use of graphical icons, but you must admit the cleverness of Design Ideas' ability to find words and marry up matching graphics with, yes, a single click of the mouse. If we tried to do this by hand, we could have easily have spent 10 minutes locating icons and positioning them on the page. While this page is interesting, I find it to be a little too small for the text. So I examine our other design ideas and find a more forceful and a bigger font version of icons, Mary chart text bullet points. That looks good. Okay, let's pick up the pace and find a solution for the next two slide pages that represent the before and after of our proposed office renovation. I'll try a few choices for the current office floor plan. Here's an important tip. Look closely and you will see that Design Ideas is treating the architectural plans as it's just an image and PowerPoint is creatively cropping out some of the picture for artistic purposes. This is not good. We want our audience to see the whole image. So we need to choose wisely. This looks great. It's the full image with a consistent background design set of elements and matching color scheme. Now onto the proposed floor plan slide. And while we could use the exact same matching layout, we do want our audience to recognize we've moved on to a new slide so we can scan down the list of choices but nothing really works for me. And for the first time, we need to click see more design ideas, which sometimes provide better choices. And sometimes you hit gold. But as I scroll down this list, I don't see anything I really like. So I'm gonna try a third page and see if there's any choices there by clicking see more and nothing there either. Okay, so we're gonna have to go hybrid. We'll start with the design element and then we're going to hand customize it. So here's my vision. I want the base overall look to match, but I want to give it space to make the new floor plan image much bigger and forefront. First, we'll shrink down the title of the proposed plans and then we're going to resize the image to larger sizes, reposition both the title and the floor plan and the concept is to have the design ideas generate a layout with the graphical elements and title location and color schemes. And from there we can hand adjust it to our liking and no one's going to be able to tell the difference between the slide before and after they all match. Onto the next slide. And soon some trouble ahead with design ideas. This slide has a PowerPoint table and a chart and just these two elements totally confuse design ideas, and it gives up. It has no ideas for us. I have devoted a whole tutorial on the quirks of why this tool works and doesn't work for specific slides. See it listed above, but let's experiment on this slide. I will select the chart and I'm going to elect to delete it out. And once gone, design ideas returns with some suggestions for this simpler layout. There's more to this, so do check out the earlier reference YouTube tutorial. There are a lot of choices for our table, and some just look horrible, and others do make the text more readable. But I miss our chart, so I'm going to undo this, because I think it adds more visual data to our presentation, and it's okay for us not to use design ideas for every single slide, as long as they still match. On to the next slide. And apparently we use SmartHeart to create the org chart. And it looks good, so I'm not going to mess with it. However, the following slide about current issues also use SmartHeart in our creation process, but the colors are drab and they don't match the previous slide. Design ideas to the rescue. See how the colors now match the slide before with just another click? 
but I find this slide does have too many words, which probably deserves some serious text editing. But let's see what design ideas can do. If you look at some of the suggestions, they do make the text more readable, but we really need to come back and edit out some of those too many words. And for the remodeled goal slide, we have another example of smart art. I love smart art. And like before, the color scheme is monotone and dull. Design ideas will help provide a consistent set of colors and styles, which is important to give your overall slide deck a unique editorial vision to make the presentation stand out from the crowd. As I browse through my choices, I could mimic the previous slide, but I want the goal slide to stand out and make a bolder statement. So I need to go through several pages of suggestions. And I do find one that will jump out when we transition from the previous issue slide to the remodeled goal slide. More smart art for our project execution schedule slide. And if we look very, very, very closely, we do see a light arrow indicating the passage of time. But this is way too invisible. We want to shout out timeline when this page arrives. Design Ideas presents a variety of more interesting project schedule timelines, but we're wrestling again with too many words, which may get lost on the big screen conference room or in a small screen Zoom meeting. Browsing through the list, I like this visual timeline. But if I continue with my editing, I would come back and make the text items bigger with larger fonts with some hand customization. Next, the most important slide, the summary slide, where we make the request to approve our project. This slide must stand out. Design ideas gives me some choices, but they seem limited. In fact, the use of the existing photo of engineering drawings may be constraining the ideas to fit both image and words on the page. So I'm going to delete the photo and see if we get better choices to match our vision. And restarting design ideas from the design ribbon menu, we're now presented with a more varied set of recommendations. And this conversion from text bullet points to smart art bullet points is more forceful. I love this look, but I'm most likely going to come back and tweak it just a bit to change the white color font for request approval to something that stands out even more. The final slide is what I call the bookend slide, which we discuss in many of our PowerPoint master tutorials. I don't want to end my presentation on a blank screen, so I'll typically copy my title slide and move it to the end. If you recall, our flashy opening title slide, but here we want something a little more sedated, but in the same thematic genre. I think this selection will work as a nice ending, giving our audience a chance to ask any questions that they might have. Reviewing our work, we now have a unique presentation with a customized thematic look from cinematic opening slide to a variety of visual layouts with common colors and graphical elements to tie them together. We also added some extra punch when needed. And when I say we, it is both us as the creator and the PowerPoint design ideas as our inspiration muse. Along the way, we found that some slides work just fine without design ideas. And other times we needed to build the base design ideas and then tweak the placement or alter the font characteristics to maximize our message. But in the end, we went from just okay presentation to a spectacularly excellent slide deck. And do recall that we did the same formatting in just under three minutes at the beginning of this tutorial. My recommendation is to create your slide deck and then come back and use design ideas to make the presentation fabulous. What to watch next? Of course, you can never get enough smart art in PowerPoint. So dive in with my matching tutorial on smart art tutorials for PowerPoint getting started and subscribe to see all 12 of our smart art videos. Until next time, go power up.